Okay guys, so what we're going to do now is we're just going to have a little look at um, firstly creating some of our own animations just with a very simple animation with this um, treasure box that I've got here of the, the lid opening. Okay, just to get started with how animations work. And then we're going to bring that over into Unreal Engine and see how we can work with those animations and create a script for it to open uh, when we want it to. Okay. So first of all, um, I've got this model already kind of pre-made. I've just got these two parts here. If you just want uh, to practice with animations, you know, you could just create two boxes really, but um, make sure your uh, box is in two parts. Okay, so I've just got two pieces to my model here. That's it. Um, one of the things that I've had to do here as well, if you aren't sure, is I've had to move the pivot point of the model to the back. Okay, in that way, uh, if I rotate the object, it will open from the hinges at the back. Okay, so to do that, if you aren't sure, I have to go over to this tab here, the hierarchy tab, and I change it to affect pivot only, and then I can move the position of that pivot point. Okay, turn that back off again, and then uh, we're good to go. Okay, so um, obviously this video isn't about the modeling so much, so um, we're just going to focus on the animation. So with animation in 3ds Max, at the bottom here, we have our timeline. Okay, it goes from zero to 100 by default. You can change that. They are the number of frames. Okay, so generally speaking, uh, one second of animation uh, with frames is gonna be about 24 frames, generally. So what we're gonna do is we need to work with keyframes. So I'm gonna select the top box here. This is the only thing that's gonna be animated. Okay, and I'm gonna turn on my auto key down here. What that's going to do is it's going to automatically generate keyframes for my animation. And you can see what's happened here. Um, I've got now uh, a blue, green and red uh, icon down here on zero. If you don't have that, don't worry, just make sure your slider, this guy, um, in fact I've got it, I can see I've already got my animation done. <laughs> Okay, I was demonstrating that earlier on. So I'll delete that. So I'll go to zero frames. So if you, you, you probably won't have that icon there uh, immediately. So what we need to do is we need to set the frames at zero. Okay, so we want it to be in this position at zero seconds. So I'm going to push plus there to set those frames. So blue, green, and red, that is the movement, rotation, and scaling um, things that are changing. So they're all set to this position at zero. Then all I need to do is go up to, I'm gonna to go to 25. I'm gonna get my rotation and I'm gonna rotate this um, 50 degrees, that's fine. Okay, that's how it's gonna be when it's fully open. You can see because auto key is on, it's automatically created a keyframe on my 25th frame. Okay, so let's turn auto key off now. And I can slide this back and forth and you can see that every frame in between that has kind of been generated for me. So there's my animation. So I push play and you can see it in real time. Okay, that's great. So, you know, if I wanted to, uh, things to happen after this, I could put auto key back on and then maybe at like 40 frames, maybe I want it to, to move like that. I don't know. And then obviously then between 25 and 40, it will make that change. Okay. So you can see how the, the keyframes work there. I'm going to delete that one though, because I only need it up to 25. That's fine. Cool. So I've got my animation. Simple as that. Um, what I want to do now is export this to bring into Unreal Engine. So I'm going to go to File, Export. Uh, let's chuck it on the desktop. There's some ones I was doing to some groups earlier on. I'm just going to call this um, Box Test or whatever. Call it whatever you like. Hit Save, and then you'll get some settings come up. So generally speaking, what happens here by default is this turbo smooth is on. Um, normally you don't want that unless you really know what you're doing with your modeling and, and you know that you want that on. Um, animation, you want to make sure that is on. Okay. Uh, and then embed media. If you've got a material, I think I've just um, a brown material I've got on there. Uh, you want to have that turned on. If you don't have materials, you don't have to worry. So push OK. That's the export settings and that is done. So I can come back over to Unreal Engine now. And what I'm gonna do is in my content folder, I am going to, oh, this is a third person template, by the way. 
I'm just going to create a new folder. Uh, let's just call it box. And in here, I'm going to hit import. I'm going to find that thing I just exported, which is this guy. And then all you need to do with the import settings is ensure that this import animations is on. OK, because obviously we want the animation files to come through too. And then I'm going to hit import all. OK, nine times out of ten when you import things, you get uh, an error message of some kind. So here are my assets now. OK, so I've got um, a skeletal mesh here. I've got the animation there. So I can see that's the animation of the lid. So if I double click that, uh, I'm really, really far away for some reason. Why on earth has that happened? I don't know. Let's just crank that up and zoom in. So you can see my animation of my lid opening there. OK, so that's my animation asset. Great. So what I want to do to make this usable is turn it into a blueprint. OK, so I'm going to right click here and make a blueprint class. I'm going to keep it as an actor because, you know, this thing doesn't need to be able to walk around or anything. Uh, let's call that box. And I'm going to build my model within this blueprint. So I know I've got two skeletal meshes, one for the base of the model and then one for the lid. So I'm going to add a skeletal mesh here. And then I'm going to add my box base. There it is. OK, and then I'm going to add another skeletal mesh. And then I'm going to uh, add the lid. OK, OK, that looks great. Um, uh, you could rename these if you're sensible. Let's rename them. So that's the um, box base. And then this is the box lid. Naming things will be useful, and you'll see why in a minute. OK, so what I also want to do, I want this to um, to work so that it opens um, eventually, like when I'm near the model. Uh, and I push a button, probably the E key, and it will open the box. OK, that's what I want. So I want the animation to be tied to a script. So I'm going to have a box collision detection, which is this guy here. OK, and I'm going to make this a bit larger. OK, so when my character is within this region, it, they will be able to push the E key and open the box. OK, um, just so I can show you, I suppose, um, if you just wanted the you had a, something that was animated that you just wanted to continuously um, play its animation, what you can just do is change this animation mode to use animation asset and then you can plug in your animation for it. And you can see that happening there um, and it will just go over and over and over again. But that's not the effect that I want for what I'm doing here. I just wanted to show you that just in case that was useful to you. So I'm going to change that back to what it was. I'm going to go into the event graph. I'm going to delete all that preset stuff. I'm going to select the box. That's the uh, the collision detection box. Right click here and then add on component begin overlap. OK, because I want this to happen when my character is within this region. OK. I want it to react with the third person character blueprint, which is this one. So I'm going to cast to the third person character and link that up. OK, what I also want to do is I want it to I want to use a Boolean. OK, so that when the character is within the, the region of the box, that Boolean is going to be true. So I'm going to go to variables here. I'm going to call it um, let's call it near box or something. OK. So that then is going to set near box. There we go. It's going to set it to true. OK, that's a good start. So now I need it to set it to false when I'm moving away from it again. So select box there, add an event, end overlap this time. Uh, save myself time. I'm going to control C, control V to copy and paste those. There we go. And then this time it's going to set it to false. OK, um, so, okay, so after this, what I wanted to do is um, uh, show like a, a widget, I suppose. It's going to say, uh, tell the player what to do. So what I'm going to do, I'll keep it within here as I'm going to make a new user interface widget blueprint. And I'm going to call that um, 
press E. And then down here, I want to add a canvas panel to my widget so I can see what I'm doing. And then I'm going to add a text block, which is going to say press E to uh, interact or whatever you want it to say. All right. So it kind of tells the user what to do uh, to interact with the object. OK, and I'm, that's over to the right hand side. So I'm going to anchor it to the right hand side. Wonderful. Compile that. And that's all I need to do there. Back here again. So what I need to do now is when um, I'm near the box, when that's set to true, I want it to create a widget. Which one do I want it to create? My press E one and then add to viewport. OK, so I'll just um, sorry, connect that to there to show you what that does now. So if I bring my box into the game, push play, if I walk up to it, notice that press E to interact has popped up. But the problem is that's going to just stay there forever now. So I don't want that to happen. Uh, so I'm going to come back to my script. So when I've got my end overlap, when I walk away, what I want to happen is remove from parent. Uh, and actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag from here, remove from parent. OK, and then tie that into that script. OK, so that means when I walk away, uh, it's going to set near box to off again, and then it will remove the widget. So let's try that. Push play as so we approach it. Press E to interact comes up. I walk away and it goes away. Lovely. So now obviously what we need to do is make it do something when I push E. So what I need to do first of all is come up here to edit and go to my project settings. Because what I need to do is create an input, which is here, for my E key. So you see I've got action mapping. I'm going to press plus, toggle that down. And here I have a new action mapping, which I'm going to call interact. And the key that I want to bind that to is going to be my keyboard. And it's going to be an E key. There you go. OK, none of this shift E, whatever, just the E key is going to be my interact action. OK, there's no save button for this. It just saves automatically. Come back to my script again. So I need a new event now. Okay, which is going to be when I push E, which is my interact uh, mapping. So I'm going to type in interact. You can see action of it, uh, my inputs there, interact. Okay, cool. So when I press it, I want it to check if this Boolean is true. So I need to go branch. Okay, condition. So I'm going to drag my near box one in, get. The condition is going to be based on this, whether it's true or not. So if it's true, OK, I want it to play the animation of, and this is why we named those things earlier on, is because that's now called box lid. So I know which one it's, it's going to be. It's going to play the animation of the box lid. OK, um, and the animation I want it to play is going to be here, and it's going to be that one. That one's my lid, I can see. Um, there we go and compile that. So that's going to say, OK, when that is pressed, uh, if this condition is true, if that box is true, which means if I'm near to it, then it's going to play that animation. However, that still won't work. OK, I'll just kind of show that to you. If I go over here, I'm pushing E now, and nothing is happening still. The reason being is because um, for whatever reason, I think this is new when Unreal 5 came out. Unreal 4, you didn't have to do this. But we have to enable the inputs in the script. OK. Um, and I believe the best place to do that is going to be before the widget comes on the screen. So I'm going to shift those guys over a little bit. So when it sets that Boolean to true, it is also going to enable inputs. OK. Leave that there for now, because down here, when we end the overlap, when we walk away, I want it to D. 
disable the inputs. Okay, these are going to need a um, target, which is going to be the get player controller. Okay, so we can link them both up to the player controller. So that's the uh, the uh, inputs that it's associated to. Okay, let's try that now. So let's push play. Let's walk over to my box and push E. And we still don't get anything running. Okay, let's have a little look. That needs to be the player controller that goes there. Let me just double check that. Try that again. There we go. Okay, so you can see it's opened when I've done that. So if I walk away, my uh, press E to interact goes away too. Okay, so let's just review. Um, so yes, we've got that. So when we begin overlapping, turns that Boolean on, enables the inputs, adds the widget to the screen. When we walk away, it changes the Boolean to off, disables the inputs and removes the widget. When we push our E key, if this Boolean is true, so if we are near the box, it will then play the animation. Okay. One thing that you also may need, I noticed that it didn't happen with mine. Sometimes if you walk away from it um, and then walk back again, let's see if I push E again. Yeah, if I push E now, look, it's just going to keep on, keep on doing it, which we don't want to be happening. So what I need to put in here before it plays animation is this do once. Okay, because we only want it to be able to do that once. Okay, so let's try that again. So if I push E now, and then if I keep pushing E, uh, it's not going to keep replaying that animation anymore. Okay, brilliant. And obviously that box just stays open to indicate to the player that it's been collected. Okay, so that's how we can work with animations there. We can add in a um, you know, interact on key press uh, with a widget that tells the user how to interact um, with all of that. All right, so from this, if you wanted to continue further, um, you know, once this happens here, so once, uh, you know, the box has been opened, so after it's played the animation, you could have a, a variable that is um, for like, I don't know, let's say gold or something, and then the chest was gold, you collected 100 gold from the chest. You could have a set that variable to plus 100 so that when you opened it, it gave you those resources or whatever it was from from this part here if you wanted to continue that on further okay but that is all i wanted to show for now was getting started with the animations creating them in 3ds max and then making use of them within unreal engine okay and that's all for now